Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanna open up and talk to you guys about another personal journey of mine, which is my journey to dressing more modestly or moderately or covering up more, whatever we wanna call it. I wanna tell you guys how and why I started dressing more modestly. This is how I used to dress, you know. Okay, I thought I was giving the girls fire, gas, and I was eating it up. <laughs> and this is basically how I dress now. This is what I'm giving the girls now. It's a little bit more covered up, you know? I kind of want to tell you about just the process of going from one to the other, what my mindset was, what made me do it, and also what has kind of come out of it. So yeah, if you guys are excited for today's video and topic, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure you guys subscribe for more videos. And yeah, make sure you comment down below. Just tell me your thoughts, where you at in your journey as well. I'm also gonna be doing my makeup. So this is gonna be like a get ready with me chit chat. So just like sit down, relax. And all the products that I'm gonna use on my face are gonna be in the description box. So just open it up and everything will be there so you can purchase away. We're probably gonna be here a while. So first and foremost, I think there are many reasons why somebody may start to dress more modestly. Maybe you're in a new season of life and you just feel like, you know, you just maybe need to cover up a little bit more. Maybe you didn't like your personal style before and you kind of want to switch it up. Maybe you want to attract new things so you change your outer look or maybe your values have changed and also maybe your faith system has changed and it plays a big part as to why you want to dress more modestly. And for me, the main reason why I started dressing more modestly was because I started taking my walk with God more seriously and baby, he convicted me. I got convicted and I got convicted about how I was dressing, okay? It's kind of hilarious, like just me even making this video right now because this is not something I ever saw for myself. I didn't see an issue with how I dressed, to be honest, I really didn't. And even when like I decided to, you know, follow God for real and really just obey the teachings of Jesus Christ, I, I did not think he was gonna change how I dressed. I didn't, I thought I was giving the girls fire. I thought I was giving them gas. I do wanna say really quickly before we even get into it, like I don't believe in, you know, just because you say you're a Christian, now you must start dressing modestly because you can dress modestly, right, on the outside, but then there's no change in the inner. And I believe that God cares about our inner most first. And as he changes your inner, then the outer follows. And that's pretty much what happened to me and we're gonna kind of get into it. I basically like had an encounter with Jesus Christ and I was like, oh, I have to like follow him for real. <laughs> and there's a whole video on that. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it up here and in the description box. After I, you know, decided to really walk with God, right? A couple of things changed. This didn't happen immediately, but maybe like a few months into my walk, I found myself noticing how uncovered I was. And it was so interesting because like I said, I didn't see anything wrong with how I dressed. I really didn't. thought it was lovely. <laughs> I thought it was absolutely lovely. But I started to notice like how uncovered I was. And let me tell you a little story. So basically, I remember going to a birthday party, right, for one of my friends and I had I had to travel there so I had brought two dresses one was gonna be like a backup I didn't really want to wear it, but I just brought it just in case and then another one that I had just bought but I never tried it on the first dress that I wanted to wear which was like semi decent and like semi modest I wasn't even trying to be modest I liked it so I just wanted to wear it it didn't fit so the second dress I was gonna wear was like a it's like a skin tight bandage dress I had worn it like a few months previously to Nigeria when I was doing Detsy December like I, I I didn't see anything wrong with the dress before. But as I was wearing the dress, right, even before I got to the party, I noticed myself kind of like picking up the dress, trying to like hide my boobs a little bit more because I just felt like my boobs were really exposed. And I'm like, that's weird. Why do I feel so uncomfortable right now? Like I've worn this dress countless times and I be looking good in the dress. Like I'm like, what's the issue? Also, as I was, you know, chasing after God, like I tried to like, join different Christian conversations, maybe like Zoom chats and things like that, just so I can like learn more. The Christian conference that I had gone to where I got saved actually, they were having a Zoom conversation and just kind of talking about womanhood and Christianity and things like that, right? And this is why I think it's important to have conversations and just safe spaces where you can just like ask questions. It's necessary, sometimes you just don't know. Like you don't know what to do, you don't know how to walk with God, you don't know how to, you don't know how to see God, you don't know nothing. <laughs> so anyway, one girl asked, how do you attract a guy as a Christian? She was like, as a Christian woman, like how do I attract a godly Christian man? And I was like, that's a great question, girl, because how do you? <laughs> I will actually never forget. <laughs> I'll never forget the answer, so. 
and this is why it's important to have wise counsel too right so there were some you know other women that were maybe like more seasoned christians in their walk and stuff anyway so they were sharing and my business coach I told you she saved okay but she was just like there's nothing wrong with wanting to attract you know a good man a good Christian man one of the things you also have to ask yourself if you are truly looking for a Christian man that's really like chasing and seeking after God's heart right she said you should take a look at yourself and see if you are if you are actually attracting him or repelling him by how you carry yourself for example like go on your Instagram and like what what pictures are you taking what are you wearing does the man that you're trying to attract does he have to shield his eyes from you because you're half naked because a man that's really after Christ, we're not talking about, you know, saying you, you love God, but then you do everything opposite of God. No, a, a guy that's really after Christ is trying to pursue. I want to preface this by saying he's trying to pursue righteousness, holiness. He's trying to be more like Christ is running away from lust, right? He's not trying to fall into sin. He ain't trying to get tempted. So he ain't gonna look at half naked women. So are you giving half naked? Does he have to shield his eyes from you? So a lot of times, you know, maybe us Christian girls, you're trying to attract the man by wearing less, but really you're actually repelling a true man of God. And I was like, huh, I never thought about it like that. Not to say that the only reason why I started dressing more modestly was because of a man, absolutely not. But I mean, personally, it made me think about myself. I'm like, I'm saying that I want a guy that, you know, is Christian and loves God, but low key, if he was really like pursuing abstinence and I looked at my page, I looked at my Instagram page and I was like, yo, if a man was pursuing abstinence, he would not take me seriously as a, 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 a woman of God. He would be like, she's clearly not serious. <laughs> because I was giving sex. I was giving sex, girl. And here's the thing, like that is what society tells us is good. All we are sold through pop culture, through the media is sex, to dress sexy, to show off your curves, like give them boob, give them butt, give them thigh. That's what we're told. And that's what I was giving. And I was like, wow, it may work for the world, but for what I'm actually trying to pursue now, which is, you know, going after Christ, being more holy, cause God is more, God is holy, right? And also wanting a man that is doing the same. I'm like, wow, I'm actually, I, I'm repelling this man. That definitely made me think about how I was dressing. Even after that, like, I didn't, like, all of a sudden start just dressing modestly immediately. No, like, I still wore, like, a lot of the same things that I wore. I just made more, like, smaller changes. And I just took heed to how I, like, felt. I think every, like, Christian <laughs> kind of has this period where like you start feeling convicted but it doesn't you don't necessarily change immediately and if any of y'all are feeling that conviction just take heed to it okay <laughs> that's that's the holy spirit yes it is so it was definitely a process for me and over time i got more and more convicted and i just started to like listen to the voice inside of me who i you know who i believe is the holy spirit because what i've noticed with conviction is you feel uncomfortable so in order to ease that uncomfortable feeling you do the thing that then makes you feel at peace and that's, I started realizing, this is when I started noticing how the Holy Spirit speaks to me. When you're uncomfortable, it's because the Holy Spirit is either trying to get you to change something, get you to notice something, he's highlighting it so that you can make a change. And then when you do make the change or obey the small, still voice, you feel peace after. So I would notice like, I would wear an outfit and like, I'm like, hmm, I don't know, like, uh. And then I decided to change it because I'm like, you know what, whatever, let me just change it. And then I'd feel comfortable after and I'm like, huh, interesting. So that leads me to my next point. One of the reasons why I also have really embraced modesty more is because of the comfort and the peace and the confidence that it brings me. I am so much more comfortable in how I dress now. It's lovely. It's actually lovely. <laughs> because before I was giving you know, you know when you wear like a really tight dress or really short dress or maybe a really deep plunge dress because one thing about it, I was going to show you some boob. <laughs> you know, that's what I was working with. God, God didn't give me nothing back then. So I was working with up here. So I was going to give you boob. I'm free. The Lord saved me. So I believe in being honest. Like, I'm not going to be that one. I hope 
I always pray to God. I'm just like, God, don't make me ever become some uptight Christian because that is just not okay. <laughs> like, I hate that. I'm very honest about like my journey and the fact that I'm still like walking it out every day, but that's how I got to where I'm at with God, honestly, just by being honest. Like you don't have to change yourself per se. Be honest with where you're at. That's what I was giving. I feel a lot more comfortable in the clothes that I wear now because when you know I would wear tight things or more risque things you just gotta like always be on guard about you know making sure nothing's slipping you don't have a nip slip you know you don't bend down too low because your hoo-ha may show out like it was just a lot you know now I just wear my free flowing two-piece and I'm good so one I'm comfortable I'm just so much more comfortable you know and I have a lot more peace because I feel like I'm not grieving God with how I'm dressing and then lastly I feel a lot more confident now I noticed that I feel a lot more confident in how I dress now versus before you know I believe God still loved me either way because he, he does he he absolutely loves you regardless but somebody can love you but not like what you're doing you know what I'm saying I feel so much more confident with how I look I genuinely feel like it kind of elevated my look a bit just the equation of feeling comfortable and at peace with myself and with God and how I how I'm dressed I think all of that you know pushes me to feel more confident because I'm all around at rest you know what I'm saying so I could show up knowing I look good <laughs> I look good I feel good God is pleased everyone's happy well I'm happy you know I'm happy and my Lord is happy so that's really that's who I live for so that's all that matters for me right I think what always gets me is just like kind of living out scripture and that's kind of what solidified God for me as well like when I started reading the Bible more and more it put words to what I was actually experiencing for example first Corinthians 2 like 13 to 16 let me just read it for y'all real quick when we tell you these things we do not use words that come from human wisdom instead we speak words given to us by the spirit using the spirit's words to explain spiritual truths but people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from god's spirit it all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it for only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means those who are spiritual can evaluate all things but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others so who knows the Lord's thoughts, who knows enough to teach him, but we understand these things for we have the mind of Christ. It speaks to what happens when you receive the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God. Things that just once did not ever make sense to me or things that I never saw an issue with before, all of a sudden I start getting convicted about it. And like, sorry, I'm knocking on this, right? And like some of my friends will be like, what is the issue? Maybe you're not in Christ or maybe you are low key and you, anyway <laughs> we're gonna leave you let the word work, lord work on you but like you know somebody else maybe another friend of yours who y'all may y'all may trust the same y'all may have y'all may have you know bonded off off of so many things that you guys did which were similar all of a sudden they they don't understand why you want to cover up some more they, they just don't get it and it's literally because like when you carry the spirit of God, you start carrying the mind of God. You, you start thinking how God thinks. You see things from his lens. And that's really what happened with me. <laughs> that's really what started happening with me and it's still happening with me. I, I just, I see things the way God sees it now. Before me exposing my breasts was not an issue. All of a sudden, why am I so uncovered? What's going on? <laughs> you want to just be careful though. Like, let me just say this. Like, you really do want to be careful not to end up carrying or like adopting a spirit of religion that can happen and you really do got to be careful of it where you start judging people because they're not covering up or you know they're not doing things the way you do it and you know you're getting being convicted so why aren't they being convicted and you just start like turning up your nose towards people because they are not walking in holiness meanwhile we're all a work in progress right like even you yourself me or me myself like i'm not holier than thou baby we all still making mistakes just because god convicted you in one area because someone else hasn't gotten there yet that doesn't mean god isn't with them but also just because you're not convicted about something does not negate the fact that it's still wrong you know so some people will say oh god hasn't convicted me about dressing modestly and it's like okay it doesn't change the fact that god still wants us to dress modestly come on let's just let's clear that up real quick <laughs> because every day is god didn't convict me yeah okay 
it doesn't change the fact that it still ain't right. <laughs> Imagine being like, God didn't convict me about not having sex till marriage. Meanwhile, it doesn't change the fact that God does not want you having sex before you're married. Do you get what I'm saying? But yeah, just make sure you don't, you know, adopt the spirit of religion, really. You know, there's righteous anger and, or what is it, righteous indignation. One more. There is like just you genuinely want more for people, right? And you know that it grieves God. Cool. And you go and you pray about it. Go and pray. You have, all you can do is pray and just worry about yourself. If the Holy Spirit tells you to, you know, tell somebody, cool. But like, you just just don't. Please don't start looking at people like, how could she ever wear that? No, because you you were once there, and that that's you know for me. I always try to remember like, girl, you were you were right there. I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. That's the thing, like, a lot of times people don't see it. They cannot see it. So you have to have some grace. I also think it's really interesting, I kind of touched on this before, but like, the whole thing about like, modesty and just, just being a little bit more covered up, you really do need to think about like, what's influencing the decisions that you're making. Because honestly, when I think about how I used to dress, right? It makes me think about what was actually influencing my decisions at that time. It's so interesting. Thing. because like I said I didn't I didn't notice I didn't think there was anything wrong with how I dressed and I think I didn't think anything wrong with it because majority of what I saw online and what was pushed to me and what I believe is a push to a lot of us is that nudity is okay sex is okay that's what's pushed now right that's that's what we're literally told you know if you look at music artists today like everyone is naked not only are they naked, they're, they're having sex in front of us. They're saying we want to have, they're selling sex, right? And it's like, wow, that was also, I adopted that for myself too, because that's what I saw. And the thing about it is it's, all, it's also glorified. It's not just push, it's glorified. It's like you get rewarded the more um, risque you dress. Honestly, I think it's, 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 it's deeper, but like just the more exposed you are, the more glorification you get which is why we see you know major artists they'll start off you know fairly modest this is not all but like majority they'll start off very modest and then as time goes on they become more and more risque they become more and more exposed they're they're literally and then before you know it they're just they're just naked <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's even what the the scripture speaks to about like being not conformed to the world I'll put it on the screen, but basically the concept of like we're in this world But we're not of this world right and just even like what I said before about how the things of God are not gonna be understood by by like just somebody that doesn't carry the spirit of God. You you end up doing the opposite a lot of times of what society says to do. Yeah, that's what I was giving. I was definitely influenced by that whether I realized it or not. And when I think about it now, it's like, wow, we're literally being influenced by people subconsciously. Cause a lot of times you don't realize you're being influenced by them. But it's like, we're being influenced by people that if you really knew the life they were living behind the scenes, you, you don't even want their life. You don't want their life, but you look like them and you're gonna attract what they attract. And you know, it's just, it's really interesting. I'm gonna give an example and when I say this example, like I really don't want y'all to take, I'm not saying this about the person personally. I'm just giving an example of what they're giving off. I don't know what they're actually going through, right? But just for example, somebody like Jada Wada, right? Cute girl, she's cute, her hair, her hair looks nice all the time. <laughs> somebody like Jada Wada, right? A lot of us are inspired by that aesthetic, right? Just like mini skirts, you know, give boop, doop, doop. You know, when you look at her lifestyle, she's getting money, doing what she needs to do. And again, this is not about her personally. I'm sure she's a great person. But it's like, when I think about it, I don't actually want Jada Wade's life. I don't, I don't want that for myself. And a lot of times we, we end up emulating these aesthetics of people, but you don't really want their life. A lot of times, and I'm not saying this about Jada, but I'm saying this about just like celebrities, influencers and all that stuff. A lot of times people, they show off a really nice life. But if you knew what they were going through behind the scenes, a lot of people are depressed. A lot of people are not happy, guys. <laughs> and I can tell you that as somebody that kind of, I'm not a full-blown celebrity, but I've been there. You know, I've seen how you can look one way online and on social media, but then behind the scenes, you, <laughs> you get in tossed back and fro from a guy that just will not take you seriously. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, girl, 
it's crazy. I've really come to realize like you really do have to also be careful of what you're taking in because it influences a lot of your decisions whether you realize it or not. I'm watching a bunch of music videos with my favorite artists and they're half naked and they seem like they're doing well. My brain is gonna register and go, okay, you can show a little, you know, show a little boob, show a little thigh, show a little, and it'll be good. You're gonna get more likes. You're gonna, and you will, possibly. But it's like, does God want that though? Does God want that? And it's like, who's my allegiance to? People or God, I don't know, you know? <laughs> and the last point I really wanna talk about um, as to why I really, you know, started dressing more modestly is because I realized once I started talking online about Christ, I was like, you are really gonna confuse people if you out here dressing however you wanna dress and then you're telling them give their lives to Christ. It's just simple. Again, like I said, this is not religious. Like it's not about changing the outer before the inner. Like God started doing the work inside of me and I realized, oh, what's happening on the inside what I look like right now in terms of how I used to dress it doesn't match what God is doing on the inside of me also that's another thing when you give your life to him and you start walking with him he calls you to a higher standard and some of the things that you used to do before it's not gonna fly it's not gonna fly as much so I recognized that like eventually I knew that God was gonna start having me talk about him online I knew eventually not at the time but I knew eventually you know and I really appreciate my business coach because man she told me like it was <laughs> she was like chizzy now that you've given your life to christ amen um we need to talk about your dressing and you know it's funny because when she when she sat me down and talked about this i already was like convicted about how i dressed so everything she said just com was a confirmation to me but it still wasn't actually easy to hear and she was just like you know you are an influencer and you carry influence and I would hate for you to start talking about God online and what he's doing for your life, but then you end up confusing the body of Christ at the same time by dressing scandalously. It, it gives two different messages. That's just the truth. And this is why I took my time before coming online and start telling y'all and talking about God. It's been two years since I gave my life to Christ. I'm really only starting to talk now. And I really feel like more people need to do that. <laughs> It's not by force that you have to start coming online and start evangelizing. Keep you and your relationship with God to yourself because it is a personal thing. It is so personal. Keep it to yourself and let him do the work on you before you now come outside and start leading people astray. And this is for influencers. If you are an influencer and you're watching this or you desire to be a content creator or somebody with influence, like you gotta recognize, even the Bible says it, teachers, leaders are judged twice as hard in fact let me find it dear brothers and sisters not many of you should become teachers in the church for we who teach will be judged more strictly indeed we all make mistakes for if we could control our tongues we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in any other way and like i don't know if you guys know but when we say the church like we are the church in fact church is in session right now <laughs> we're two or three are gathered like jesus is present right we're the church Everywhere you go, you represent Christ. Even you as a child of God, period, you are a representation of Christ. When somebody meets you, they are also meeting with Christ. How you present yourself matters because they're gonna take that in and be like, oh, okay, she gave me the gospel, she told me about Jesus, okay, but like, she's also like half naked, you know? And again, we're all not gonna get it right. We're not gonna be perfect. But we can also make some decisions that would, you know, just benefit everyone so i don't know i just feel like i i definitely see online i'm going on a little bit of a tangent for a second but like i definitely see online a lot of influencers you know or you know they they coin themselves as christian influencers but then they you know they're just dressing however they want to dress which is like no judgment but at the same time you carry influence and god does hold us at a higher standard so if you know you you and god you ain't right just all the way yet keep it save it save the sermons and have the holy spirit continue to speak to you privately and when you get to a point then you can come up online and i'm not saying that to say like you can't journey you know i don't want some of y'all to feel like you can't journey at all and you should just keep your mouth shut but there is a thing about discipleship you need to be discipled a little bit more you need to just be guided a little bit more before you come out online because this is like a real thing god is gonna judge us 
<laughs> it's like actually not a joke. And honestly, one of the things that I told God, like my prayer to God is always do not let me be a hypocrite on this good old internet. Because like, it's actually not by force that I need to come here and talk about God. It's really not by force. I would rather God just do what he needs to do with me first. Like change me, change, change me for real. You know, so that I can actually walk the walk, right? And talk the talk. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not just talking to talk, no, like I'm actually living it. So yeah, honestly, if you really allow God in, he will change you. He'll start to show you places where it's like, you know, you could be nicer here, you know? You're mean. <laughs> Babe, you're mean, you know? And God is definitely still working on me, for sure. I feel like I look better. I feel comfortable, I feel more confident. My style has improved, if I must say so myself. I just feel better, I feel better. And I, and I really wanted to share this in case any of you guys, you know, have just been thinking about maybe dressing a little bit more modestly. And again, it's a process. You don't have to do a complete 180 immediately, but like just, Maybe add another layer to something. If you feel a little check in your spirit, try changing and see how you feel after. When you feel that peace after, that's how you'll start to know like, oh, the Holy Spirit was actually trying to like, tell me, do this. This is also how you learn God's voice. And this is how I'm realizing like, I'm learning God's voice. Like, oh, that's how he speaks. Cause a lot of times we, I used to think God just speaks through like an audible voice, which yes, but it's very rare that people actually hear an audible voice. A lot of times it's through your sensing, like you just sense things in your spirit and you're like, what is that? Yeah. This is to my point of being a public Christian. Obviously none of us are perfect, right? I'm not perfect, No one, none of us will ever be perfect. And God recognizes that, it's in his word. But I do think it's important to just have a selfless attitude if you're going to be a Christian in general, right? If you're gonna like really walk with God, but also as a public, like a public Christian, right? Where you're talking about your faith, like you gotta be able to like have an attitude with God where it's, if he starts telling you to like maybe change a couple of things that you're willing to hear him out on it, you know? And honestly, sometimes God will speak through other people. You know, maybe somebody will be like, hey, it kind of doesn't make sense that you're talking about God, but like you you have your, your boobs are really exposed, babe. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yes, Christians, we can definitely learn how to deliver a message more nicely to, to people, but sometimes the truth is the truth, right? And I'm glad I had people in my corner, you know, mentors that could just tell me the full truth, not just half truths to save and spare my feelings. No, they told me the full truth because they knew the gravity of what I carry and who I'm also like connected to and how I'm connected to so many of you guys. And it's like, what we say as influencers matter, it does especially as Christians. So it's like, if you wanna do what you want so bad that you're willing to just do it in expense of the body of Christ, maybe you need to sit out. Maybe you need to reevaluate why you talk about Jesus online because why? <laughs> why? And this is just coming from like, who am I? I mean, I was just got up on to two years ago, but like, that's what you gotta do. If not, then it's okay. You can actually sit out. It's, nobody has put a gun to your head door and say you must talk about God online, you know? I definitely want more from us influencers that are Christian and are public about our faith. Like, and I just want more for us Christians, period. You know, like, we can do, we can do better. We can do better, like, and it's really about yielding to God. Like, what is God saying? Is the Holy Spirit really working in you? <laughs> yeah let me know guys what do you guys think about this conversation when it comes to modesty you know covering up a little bit more where are you at with your personal journey on that what's your reasoning behind it yeah let me know and if you guys enjoyed this conversation make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already and yeah i'm gonna catch you guys in my next video see ya